Do you? But you're not eating you, enough sprouts, Stephen. Anna Maria, do you do you sit, uh, use soybean soy sprouts at Hippocrates? No, but we use all the lentil and all the other beans. Uh, and, you know, beans are great. Sprouted beans, it's uh, amazing nourishment. And I, I wanted to tell you a, a story. We, we had, uh, in November, we had one of our former guests who came here a few years before with uh, stage four colon cancer. And he got on our diet. He just had surgery. He decided not to do the other treatments. And he came to us. And so then he came back here in November and he says, I'm staying with you for nine weeks and I'm going to be in a bodybuilding um, competition. And we could not believe it. So he got a special trainer. He lived 100% on our buffet and um, he counted, his uh, trainer also counted that he got 1500 calories a day from our buffet and that he being in the bodybuilding had to lose 20 pounds and this was not a big guy he you know but he needed 20 pounds of fat off and so which means that he had to work out and uh, get rid of 2500 calories a day he said oh my god it just about killed him but he, he did it and he built up four pounds of muscle during this time with the bodybuilding and our diet and he won. He's 74. He won the 60 and came second in the 40-year-old. So in the 60-year-old, he won. I mean, this is so he proved for everybody. It was just so amazing. First of all, he's cancer-free and he is a top-notch bodybuilder and 100% on our diet. So, you know, people look at it as we are extreme and it takes extreme measures to live today. We're, uh, if you are anywhere interested in climate change, I hope you are because it's totally predictable that we are, that's happening. We need to have a more extreme and, and the most, most natural diet would be to sprout seeds. And this is like the scenes did this already long, long time ago. And if you're reading Bible, you can read about these scenes and how they sprouted. They make the bread in the sun. They sprouted grains and put, put them out in the sun to, to dehydrate. And so it's nothing new. It's just that we are in the time where we need all the nourishment that we can get. We are so depleted. We are so dehydrated. Like a big part of what we do here, of course, is juice. We make juice out of sunflower sprouts, pea sprouts, celery, cucumber. We get the great fats from that. We get carbs from that, proteins from that. And that fills you up. But for example, do you feel full after a meal here? No, you don't feel like when you ate meat and potato, you could hardly move and you had stomach ache. You never feel like that. But every guest here will tell you, I'm not hungry. I'm not, I leaving the table, I am not hungry anymore. That's what happens when you get the nourishment. You get the phytochemicals, you get the vitamins, you get the proteins that every cell in your body has been looking for. That's when you see the difference. But let's That's just- right, when, 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 when I was When I was at, at Hippocrates Institute, I ate like that. I did, yes. never felt like I wasn't hungry. But no. one more thing that you haven't mentioned, they also have sunflower seed sprouts. Sunflower seeds have a lot of oil in yes, them. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. And they have flax seeds, has yeah. a lot of oil in it. Chia yes. seed has oil in it. Oh, so absolutely. If, you, if you're eating sprouts and they're not giving you enough and you're still hungry, then yeah. eat some of the seed sprouts because they're more calorie dense. So let, let's, yeah. be, let's yeah. review because I, I want to be clear so I don't mislead anyone in the audience. I have struggled being a raw foodist because I have not gotten full. So I understand that a lot of people are very excited. So I really, the big thing is I've been doing what Doug is saying. I've been having clover and onion and radish. I've not been doing, I've not been doing these beans. So are all beans good for me? Is lima beans, is black beans, is white beans? Like are we saying, you know, I've been, when I eat cooked food, I always eat beans to get full. Are you saying that I should go and find all the beans, sprout all of them, and that is how you get full with sprouted beans, and that's what I'm leaving out, and that's why I haven't been full enough or satiated enough? I think so, and I think, you know, I wouldn't say all beans, because beans do have 
um, enzyme inhibitors, trypsins, lectins, and not all of them um, sprout well. And um, I would focus for you, I would focus on like fava beans, on lentils, on mung beans, on garbanzo beans, on green peas, on yellow peas. You know, there's all sorts of lentils. There's friend, there's a whole variety of lentils. And you will feel very content. Like, here's the thing, Steve. We we are in our brain, you know, addicted to this reptilian lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? We're we're living in scarcity. And I hear it in your voice, like you are just almost desperate to achieve a certain level of hunger or success. And with food, you need to just breathe through it and be very calm when you're, when you're eating and be thoughtful. And, and I know unequivocally, because I've done it, where I've had six jars um, and six jars produced all of my calories for 30 days. Now I diversify a little bit more. I eat fruit. Um, I'll eat some mature vegetables in various settings. Um, but my, my fail safe, uh, especially during COVID, was I felt so at peace and so tuned in that if I was eating sprouts, I was getting my nourishment. So part of it is psychological. Because when I first became raw vegan, and you met me back in those days in the early 2000s, prior to that, if I wasn't eating meat, chicken, fish, pizza, or pasta, I felt like I wasn't getting, like I was being starved to death, like it was punishment. And when I first became raw, I would eat four or five avocados to try to get that feeling of fullness. And I would overeat just to get full. And then, then when I realized the intellectual game, oh my God, I'm so nourished and I want to feel nourished, but I want to feel light and I want to feel playful. I don't want to feel that, that dopamine serotonin rush of, of fullness where I need to go sit and rest and pass out, which was what Udo described is what happens if you have too much oil. Well, you, what, you what, 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 what percent raw are each of you? over the last year? Uh, I, I would say uh, for me, probably 80%. I've, I've, the older I get, the more I like raw vegetables. I'm not doing just sprouts. I, I do a ton of broccoli. But for me, uh, I don't do well with beans and beans, peas, lentils. Uh, I can eat a little bit, but they, they don't sit well with me. So what I do is I use nuts. So you can soak the nuts, you can sprout the nuts. You can do the sunflower seeds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds. So you can get more calorie dense nutrition from the seeds because every, every gram of uh, fat has nine calories and every gram of carbs has only got four calories. So it, they're more concentrated in that sense. So you're not just, and then you can maybe uh, eat less water because the sprouts are what, 80% water, sometimes 90% water. So then you just have to eat more because you're actually you're actually getting a lot of water from them as well. And if you need more concentrated, the, the nuts are very concentrated. So f for me, but I'm about 80% raw, I maybe more. Uh, and I and it works really well for me. It, I don't know, I started later in life doing that. I just feel better than anything. And like I said, I'm 81. I have no aches and pains. I have energy. Uh, to burn, <laughs> you know, so I, I think I'm doing something right. I have more energy at 81 than I had when I was 38. Anna Maria, how about you? I would say 80 to 100. Many, many days I'm eating only here at the Institute, so it's 100%. And, you know, sometimes Brian and I make a squash, a sweet potato, or we uh, soak and sprout beans that, that I make, some hummus or some... Um, some uh, mashed, like if I make a Mexican meal, I put Mexican spices into it, but I, I prefer doing it raw. I mean, I teach here raw, especially if you have something serious going on right now, 
you know, when you eat cooked food, so what happens is that your immune system actually attack it as if it was an invader, as if a virus or bacteria came in. So if I have cancer, if I have a tumor, I, I don't have time for that. My immune system should be totally going for my tumor, kill it and be done with it. So um, I don't need anything cooked at that time. When I'm done with that, maybe two or three years after, then it's okay to have a soup occasionally, have a piece of squash and, you know, how much am I going to eat? When you eat a salad like we have, there's not much room for cooked food. So it kind of is a trick on yourself. The more raw you eat, the less cooked you're going to eat. So that's, um, it's not a big part of my life. It's, uh, it's just an add-on. Uh, I did many, many years, 100% raw. I thought I'd never eat cooked food again, but um, it's just somehow I walked back into my life. And do we have to have cooked food? No, we can be 100% raw and be very, very healthy and happy. Um, it's, it's something that each person individually can choose. And between the raw juices that I drink twice a day here and the wheatgrass, you know, two ounces of wheatgrass is worth five pounds of vegetables on a plate. So I get a lot of nourishment. So most of the time I have no need for the cooked food. And it's, uh, I would say weekend, sometimes the cooked food walks in after a big salad, but there's always big salad, but I only eat one meal a day. So I drink a lot of juices, a lot of water and um, lemon water first thing in the morning. Of course, we also take a lot of supplements. Mm -hmm.